Welcome back to Licks of the Beast, I'm Nico and let me just say that I'm absolutely pumped for this video. I've been wanting to talk about Ghost for the longest time and I'm so glad I could finally share my thoughts about this great band with you guys. Ghost is one of those bands that heavy metal fans seem to either love or hate. And I think there are two main reasons for this. One is the prevalence of religious themes and iconography in their lyrics, stage costumes and overall aesthetic, while maintaining a certain playfulness about it. For some it might be too much, while for others perhaps not enough. The other reason might be the way their music combines elements of rock, heavy metal and pop in a very unique ghost soup. For the more seasoned metalheads who like their heavy metal to maintain a certain level of aggression, Ghost's melodic sensibilities might throw them off before they have a chance to get caught up in the band's hypnotic sound and enthralling mystique. In my own case it was actually my sister who introduced me to the band around 2012 when they still had only one album out. It sounded like a strange and unlikely mix between Merciful Fate and Blue Oyster Cult and I thought that was pretty cool. A few days later I had some residual melody lingering around in my head so I listened to the album on my own and I understood the songs a bit more. So then I listened to it again and then again and the more I listened to it the more I got hooked. And then when their second album came out that was it. I saw the band live for the first time on that tour and that experience turned me into a full-fledged ghost fan. So the purpose of this video is to highlight the aspects of the band's music that I love and find so fascinating. I'll be giving some specific examples to demonstrate each point and I hope that those of you who are fans of the band will get a little extra insight into why you enjoy their music and that those who are curious about the band or haven't ever had any particular interest might be encouraged to give them a closer listen. One thing I want to point out before I start, and this is just for those who might not be aware, is that Ghost isn't really a band in the traditional sense. The music, lyrics, and really the entire ethos are all the product of one man, Tobias Forge. The other band members, the so-called nameless ghouls and ghoulettes, are essentially hired guns. And there have been multiple lineup changes throughout the band's history. Now that doesn't mean they haven't had an impact on the band's sound and evolution one way or another, but for the sake of keeping things simple and to avoid making any false assumptions, I'm going to be referring to Tobias Forge as the creative force throughout the entirety of this video. Now just keep in mind my guitar is tuned down a whole step just like Ghost in all their albums and you can get the tabs for everything in this video on my website licksofthebeast.com. With that in mind let's start with the first point, their guitar riffs are awesome. And that's because they are catchy, rhythmic, groovy, memorable and very unique. Ghost riffs don't really sound like anyone else's riffs and they get stuck in your head right away. They're interesting enough to not be banal or obvious but simple enough for less experienced guitarists to learn. And this is a big deal because as Angus Young once said, if a kid in their bedroom can't play it then what's the point? Now that doesn't mean they're to be taken lightly though because as you'll see some of their riffs can be a bit challenging. So let me show you a few of my favorite ones. I want to start with Elizabeth or Elizabeth. Well he says Elizabeth so Elizabeth. Because it's the first song I ever heard from Ghost and because it highlights Tobias Forge's creativity early on in the project's history. Now this riff really depends on the intertwining of the two guitar parts playing different iterations of a similar idea. So because of that I'm gonna have to show this one as a split screen thing so that you can see what both guitar parts are doing to get the full picture. It seems pretty weird, especially if you're looking at the guitar part that's playing different shapes. However, if you focus on the other guitar playing strictly octave shapes, you can isolate the basic theme and it makes a lot more sense. The odd interval suggests a double harmonic scale with the exception of the diminished fifth. What that means is Tobias was probably playing with this rhythm using an octave pattern and he thought it sounded cooler with some slightly different intervals between the notes. The second guitar is doing the same thing but in a different position and using different intervals over the root of each dyad. So instead of octave shapes he's using root fifth, root flat sixth and root sixth shapes.
Next, let's look at the main riff from what is arguably their breakout song, Cerise. Now they were already starting to make some waves with their second album, but when they released this lead single from the third album, Meliora, that's when things kind of blew up for them. So much so that they actually won a Grammy award for it. So anyway, the riff is based on the Phrygian mode, with a recurring major second to add color and a diminished fifth to turn the evil up to 11. Now the descending part is harmonized by a second guitar that starts a third higher and descends chromatically. So you get this sound together. And the syncopation with those accents on the upbeats makes this riff exceptionally punchy. One more riff before moving on, the awesome Call Me Little Sunshine, which was the lead single from the Impera album. This one is harmonically simpler and more straightforward as it's mostly in A natural minor, but it has a little chromatic on the tail, which is reminiscent of Thunder Kiss 65 by White Zombie. The now here too, Tobias makes excellent use of syncopation with those nicely placed upbeat accents. And again, you have a little harmony in the tail with one guitar playing major thirds over the minor thirds. So it's harmonized a third lower. The second reason why I love this band is the incredibly catchy vocal melodies and huge anthemic choruses. Tobias Forge has this amazing ability to compose melodies that stick in your head, whether they're dark and spooky, or surprisingly upbeat and poppy. Now this comes down to two things, a natural aptitude for melody that he's perfected over time by writing tons of songs and his ability to keep things simple. A perfect example is the chorus of Square Hammer. It's super catchy and it sounds huge, especially live. Now what makes it so catchy is a combination of factors. The always effective one, six, three, seven chord progression in E minor. The punchy rhythm, the straightforward vocal melody and those perfectly placed guitar fills to frame it. For the first half of the melody, Tobias sticks to the root of the first and third chords and the major third of the second and fourth chords anticipated by the fifth between the changes. So this gives the melody a strong, grounded feel, which is really important when the lyrics are asking, are you on the square, are you on the level? The backing vocals add to this by staying on the same note over the first and third chords in a flat, almost solemn tone, which is in sharp contrast with the more passionate lead vocal. And those guitar fills, they frame the melody and give the chorus a clear structure, almost like a call and response. And in the second half, when the vocal asks a longer, more direct question, are you ready to swear right here, right now, before the devil, the fill only comes in after the fourth chord. So this avoids interrupting the question and lets the fill respond only at the end. It's a clever arrangement, and although it might seem obvious now in retrospect, it's really a mark of Forge's genius that it feels so natural and effective. By the way, if you had a chance to catch their movie right here, right now, I'd love to hear what you thought of it. Now, personally, I enjoyed it a whole lot, and to be honest, I didn't really expect it to be as good as it was. It made me feel excited about live rock shows, and in a way, it took me back to my teenage years when I first watched Iron Maiden's Live After Death or Metallica's Cliff Em All. 
I also really got sucked into the storyline for however campy it was. And you know, at this point in my life, when something can do that to me, it just makes me really happy. But what about you? Reason number three, the guitar solos are really melodic and they always add to the song. You know, when a guitar solo pops up in a ghost song, it's always packed with atmosphere, amazing melodic movement, and it really adds to the song. It's never just a bunch of random licks or rock guitar cliches. And I'm surprised no one really talks about this because it's a pretty big deal. One reason might be that many, if not all, of the earlier solos were written and played by Tobias Forge himself, so there's no standout guitar hero with a recognizable face and voice in the band. Regardless, there's so much that guitar players can learn from studying these solos, and I want to show you just two examples that I'm particularly fond of. The first one is from the song Ritual off their first album Opus Eponymous. So let me play the whole solo real quick, and then I'll break it down a bit. Did you notice that there weren't any typical or familiar licks or patterns? The fingering in the first half of the solo is rather unusual, since it's all in D natural minor, but instead of sticking to a conventional pattern like this, or maybe this one, he's using like a hybrid pattern that looks more like this. Now this shows me that he was thinking melodically, not just sticking to a sequence or pattern. The melodic movement of this solo is just beautifully articulated, even though there's nothing harmonically complex going on. So he's hitting basic chord tones. The tonic for the first two chords. Right, then the fifth. And then the major third. So the melody is allowed to flow naturally without trying to be anything other than what it is. The next example is from their instrumental track Miasma off the Prequel album. And once again, I'll play the whole solo for you and then we'll look at some key points. And here again, he's playing a simple melody that descends and then ascends again in a sort of circular pattern. So it's not super predictable, but it's still easy to follow. And like in Ritual, he's hitting very basic chord tones. In this case, the melody always lands on the fifth of each chord. Now, harmonically, this is very simple, but what's important is that each note has a purpose and leads to the next in a natural and flowing manner. He follows that with a 16th note tap lick to make the next part more dynamic and to keep things engaging. Now repeating the same pattern four times gives it an almost hypnotic vibe, which he breaks on the fifth repeat leading to the end of the solo. There is a little bit of technical ability on display here with the finger tapping and the tap slide, but it's important to understand that the technique is only used because in this case, it's the best and smoothest way to express the intended musical idea. And this is why as guitarists, it's important that we develop skill and technique so that we can access it when the situation calls for it, allowing us to fully express ourselves in any context. Another reason why I love Ghost, they have awesome guitar harmonies. Now, if you've been following this channel for some time, you know how much I love guitar harmonies. And there are plenty of those all over Ghost's music. Even their heavy riffs have harmony, so of course, there's gonna be some really sweet Iron Maiden style dual guitar stuff in there as well. An example of this, let's look at the beautiful interlude from the song He Is. <laughs> This 
This one is a pretty straightforward harmony in thirds, but the melody, the phrasing, and the pacing make it sound absolutely majestic. And there's a dreamy quality to it that just lulls you in. The chord progression behind the melody is a simple 1, 3, 4, 1 in B minor. So B, D, F sharp, and B again. In the first part, the melody lands on the fifth of the first B chord, the major third on the D chord, the tonic of the F sharp, and the tonic of the second B chord. Again, this is harmonically very simple, but it flows perfectly. So this is a brilliant interlude and it works so well live. Finally, I love the way Ghost's sound and songwriting have evolved consistently and in a big way with every release since the first album. I'm always astounded at Tobias Forge's uncanny ability to craft memorable hooks and thought-provoking lyrics, as well as his ability to further develop this ghost world and to tell the story in a way that is intriguing and entertaining. On top of that, the caliber of the musicians that make up the live band has continued to improve and today the lineup is truly exceptional both in terms of their musical ability and stage presence and performance. As I said during the intro, I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time now, so I really enjoyed finally being able to do so even though it took a lot of work to put it together. I hope you enjoyed it and perhaps also learned something new along the way. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more licks of the beast. Cheers.